today on OC News. Homelessness in Los Angeles is on the rise. A celebration of Native American Heritage Month brings awareness to issues in the community. And United Airlines is preparing for the busiest time of the year. All this and more coming up on OC News. This just in. Now in tech news, the first responder on the police from Mo- There's been a lot of collaborative efforts. I feel over the blessed to be here in Fullerton. Brought to you by the Broadcast, Broadcast Journalism Students, students at, at Cal State Fullerton. OC News starts right now. Welcome to OC News. I'm Isaiah Ruiz. And I'm Sarah Granillo. Thank you for joining us this evening. Breaking news, just a short time ago, striking actors reached a tentative agreement with Hollywood Studios to end their historic strike. After 115 days, the actors' strike appears to be over. Members of the sag after had walked off their job in mid-July for an, for an increase in minimum salaries, a share of streaming service re revenue, and protection from being replaced by artificial intelligence. The union reached a deal just a few minutes ago on a new contract with Disney, Netflix, and other media companies. The city of Los Angeles has seen a huge increase in homelessness, but there is hope with the help of St. Vincent de Paul Services. Adam Garcia has the story. In Los Angeles, there has been a 9% rise in homelessness on any given night in the Los Angeles County to be an estimated 75,000 518 people on the street and a 10% rise in the city of Los Angeles. But there are resources for those who are informally homeless um, and literally may have been sleeping on the sidewalks here in Skid Row. So we provide a transitional uh, safe and uh, supportive environment for them. For many people, the rent of housing and inflation going up has put them bills behind. But here at the Cardinal Manning Center, they try to help those in need, to try to find their way back into society, find their way back in the workforce to accomplish what they want to do. And you know, a lot of people are in that situation today, particularly in an uh, area like um, Southern California, where housing costs are going through the roof with inflation, food costs are skyrocketing. The concept of helping those in need can, can do their part to, to help lift others up. More Americans are working multiple jobs as the battle of inflation and layoffs continues to rise. According to the October jobs report from the Labor Department, nearly 8.4 million people had multiple jobs in October. That's the highest number since the start of the pandemic. Experts say people may be taking on new work to offset high inflation. Remote work is also offering more flexibility and opportunities for workers to manage several jobs from home. There is also the fear of layoffs, which could have people looking for supplemental jobs. On the other hand, economists say that the layoffs are actually historically low right now signaling that the Federal Reserve's action to, to, time, to tame inflation may be working. The Disney Park Reservation System is experiencing a, a mysterious technical problem as guests scramble to discover why. Reporter Dia Barrero has further updates on the outage. Hello, Titan. We're here on Disneyland today because even the happiest place in Earth yesterday faced an outage in their system that disrupt guests from either buying tickets or from booking park reservations. Disneyland officials said that the outage was part of a planning infrastructure upgrade and that the issue has since been resolved. Patrick Sharon, a Magic K holder who also works at a nearby hotel, said the outage caused headaches for some Park goers. We have a lot of people that travel here from far away that expect to go to the park and they get here and they can't make the reservation on their phone, it becomes complicated and then uh, the phones get congested too so they can't even talk to anybody about making new reservations. Park goers voice their frustration on online forums with one saying they has been trying, quote, all morning. Disneyland officials did not respond to our request for further comment. After a few hours, the temporary glitch that affected Disneyland websites and mobile apps was finally resolved. But let's see if this is true. Let's go to the app. Let's pretend to buy a ticket. Let's select the first one. 
because we're not going. <laughs> let's put one date, one adult, this one, and let's hit continue. <laughs> okay, everything looks good. So this is all I have for today, guys. And Dia Barrero for LC News. Nine days and counting. That's how long Congress has to prevent a potential government shutdown. And so far, House Republicans don't have a concrete plan to keep things running. Washington, D.C. is once again facing a possible financial collapse. Speaker Mike Johnson and GOP lawmakers in the House went through a series of ideas Tuesday, including a short-term spending bill through January 19th. A government shutdown occurs when Congress doesn't pass funding for the federal government without something like a short-term bill. That could cause headaches for the country, including the halting of construction projects and dis disruptions in food safety inspections. Johnson has until November 17th to deal with the, his conference, the Democratic-controlled Senate, and the Biden White House. The U.S. would have lost $6 billion per week had Congress not prevented a government shutdown earlier this year. Coming after a short break, we take a peek at a day of celebrating and exploring local Native arts and culture. And United Airlines expects the busiest Thanksgiving travel period. We'll also take a look at the weather. This and more coming up on OC News. Southern California may be seeing the return of the Santa Ana winds, but luckily we have Olivia Morales in the studio to talk further about the winter. Olivia? Thanks, Isaiah. Looks like it's not quite time to take out those comfy jackets just yet because it seems like the warm weather is still sticking around. The temperature in Fullerton right now is a warm and sunny 78 degrees with a sunset at 4.53 p.m. with a projected low of 51 degrees later tonight. The Santa Ana winds seem to be at their tail end with we winds up to 11 miles per hour today. Now for the five day forecast, we've got another sunny day tomorrow with a high of 80 degrees and a low of 54 degrees. For Friday, we have a high of 79 and a low of, of 53. Saturday, we have a high of 82 and a low of 52. And Sunday will be the hottest day with a high of 85 degrees and a low of 57. Wind gusts will continually be ranging between 5 and 10 miles an hour for the rest of the week. Well, that's all the weather I have for you today, and I don't know about you, but I'm certainly hoping it gets cooler around here for the holidays. But back to you, anchors. Thank you, Olivia. November is Native American Heritage Month, and to honor that, reporter Olivia Morales went to a Native Arts Festival in Anaheim to gain more insight on the history and culture of Native Americans. A warning to our audience, topics of self-harm and suicide are discussed in the following video. Vendors and visitors gathered at Founders Park in Anaheim to celebrate Native American Heritage Month. This includes one of the vendors, Cindy Peshlakai, a beading artist and a teacher of Native American art and history at Sherman Indian High School. So I enjoy, I also teach ceramics two periods a day and I teach uh, Native American art. I kind of didn't want to just be an art teacher. I wanted it to be about Native um, culture. And so I make it a really strong part of my uh, curriculum. Tribes from North, Central and South America were all represented here, including an indigenous tribe 
where my own ancestors are from. So something I didn't expect to see today was a vendor selling jewelry from my own native tribe, the Tarahumara, also known as Rara Mori. And I got this, so this is, this is really special. There were lighthearted performances, but also important issues were discussed. For example, there is a petition to change the colonizer mascot at Anaheim High School. The colonist is a very degrading, this, this uh, tasteful um, uh, uh, name, and it represents very negative things. It's a lot of suffering, trauma. There are students that have cut themselves. There are students that have committed suicide. My brother is also uh, one of the alumni at Anaheim High School. I won't say his name. We're being recorded. But uh, so in memory of him, you know, he was a football player. We're going to change the name. Educating oneself on the issues indigenous people face is the perfect way to honor them. For OC News, I'm Olivia Morales. Newly restored cottages in Crystal Cove are becoming available this month. Our reporter Isaiah Ruiz has the story. The West Coast continues to be the best coast with a re rendition of a historic landmark. The cottages of Crystal Cove and Newport Beach have officially been brought back for those in SoCal looking to find a home away from home. Well, I always tell people my personal connection to Crystal Cove began before I was even born because my mother started here in 1937 when she was 12 years old and in 1940 she met my father here. Hi there at Crystal Cove in Newport Beach. Now as you can see right behind me here we have some of the cottages that have been rebuilt on this historic landmark. Now I have documentation of the specific projects that have been restored. Now if you're looking to get away for the weekend or the holidays coming up with Thanksgiving, Christmas, New Year's Eve, the opening for the reservation start November 13th at 8 a.m. Christian Williams, manager of the Crystal Cove Projects, talked about the mission of Crystal Cove Commissary and what he hopes it brings to the community and those looking to visit. Uh, equality, equity, kind of uh, welcoming the community. We feel that um, this is everyone's. It's, it's, we want everybody to enjoy it. So by adding eight more cottages, it kind of expands the opportunity for people to live here, uh, people to visit. With the cottages being back, California Dreamin' has a whole new meaning this holiday season. With OC News, I'm Isaiah Ruiz. Job openings are hard to find, but a new opportunity might be opening up here on campus. OC News reporter Kazra Nazrati has more. For Cal State Forts and students who are looking for a new job, Gear Up may be providing them the perfect opportunity. Gear Up is a college access program that works with the Anaheim Unified School District. They are recruiting students in providing academic services and one-on-one -on -one mentoring. The digital media coordinator of Gear Up explained why the program can be a special opportunity for students who are interested. So for me personally, it's really inspiring to get to work alongside these students and the ultimate pursuit of going after college and career readiness and helping them ensure a 100% graduation rate. Students intrigued by the stand-up shared a similar viewpoint as well. That's really inspiring, just educating like a class of kids, letting them know what education's out there, what programs are out there, what degrees are out there. Just that to me is really inspiring. That's what stood out to me. For students who are interested in applying and couldn't come to the event today, visit csufgearup.org slash hire. Kazra Nasrati, OC News. After another short break, United Airlines predicts a record-breaking Thanksgiving travel period. Plus, the National Park Service will offer a free admission to national parks on Veterans Day. Don't forget we have the latest on action for sports and in the world of entertainment coming up on OC News. I don't think that many kids in my son's school even do it. He makes fun of his friend who vapes. He would never try it. She's in the soccer. She's on the honor roll. She's just on the tape. No way. No way. No way. No way. My kid would never vape. Get your head out of the cloud. Today, nearly 8,000 kids will start vaping. Maybe even yours. Learn about the dangers at talkaboutvaping.org. Worried about your friend, but don't know how to reach out? You can say how are you or get a fake tattoo. You can ask with an app if it works for you. You can chat with them in VR. It's all good if you think you should check in. Yeah, you should. Whatever, whatever, whatever gets you talking. Reach out to a friend about their mental health. 
Learn how you can help at SeizeTheAwkward.org. Now coming back from commercial break, we'll be going into the latest action going down in sports. We have our very own sports anchor, John Rodriguez. Take it away, John. Thanks, Isaiah. What a week for sports. A new coach and a new championship team. Let's get right into it. We begin in Las Vegas, where the Raiders will host the New York Giants. Antonio Pierce makes his debut as head coach for the Raiders. In the first quarter, second and two, Jacoby Myers runs it in for 17 yards to put the Raiders on the score. Raiders strike first, 0-6. Later on, Raiders up by two touchdowns. DeVito throwing it deep over the middle, only to be intercepted by Amik Robinson. Robinson on the run to take it to the 40-yard line. Raiders able to move the chains. Third and goal, Josh Jacobs is able to rush it into the end zone for his second touchdown of the night. The Raiders will end up blowing out the Giants, but the bigger story is Antonio Pierce wins his debut against the team that he played for, the New York Giants. Moving on to basketball, Lakers take on the Heat. It was a lot of back and forth action between these two teams. Lakers finally to take the lead late in the fourth quarter. Less than 10 seconds, LeBron with the ball, running it to the who, fires it to a wide open reddish, but couldn't finish the job for a chance to win the game. Lakers fall short just like that shot, losing by one point to the Heat, 107-108. to Major League Baseball will crown a new champion. The Texas Rangers claim their first title after winning the series 4-1 against the Diamondbacks. The Rangers were undefeated on the road with an 11-0 record. Manager Bruce Bochy will win his fourth World Series title as a manager. Corey Seager was named the World Series MVP for the second time of his career, the fourth player to do it and the first to do it in both the National and American League. Now, who would have thought that when Corey Seager won the World Series at Glow Life Stadium in Arlington, Texas as a Dodger in 2020, that he would eventually win a title for that home team three years later? That's all the time I have. So I'm it back to you guys. We now head out to Titan Walk, where a sorority on campus held a fundraiser today. Our reporter Nathan Glendening has a story. Thank you, guys. I am here at Titan Walk, where AD Pi has a booth set up right behind me, where they are raising money for the Ronald McDonald Foundation. Yeah, so this is Pi of Pi. Um, we do this every year. It's to support the Ronald McDonald House charities, um, specifically the houses in Orange County and Long Beach. So we always um, promote Ronald McDonald House, and anyone is welcome to donate. Um, and it'll help support the houses directly so we can provide more support, more money, more food to those houses so that the people who use them um, can have more resources to kind of be supported in a time of need. Our girls go to the house to do house visits, make breakfast, bake cookies. Um, we go to the we go to the RMHC uh, Walk for Kids and their annual gala and volunteer and stuff. So yeah, but this is like a fun way to raise money. You know. The sorority puts this event on every single year, so if you miss it this year, please make sure you come out and donate next year for this great cause. For OC News, I'm Nathan Glendenning. <laughs> Back to you guys in the studio. United Airlines is bracing for a record-breaking Thanksgiving travel period. United is the first of the major U.S. airlines to release its forecast for the upcoming holiday season. The airline says it will carry more passengers this Thanksgiving holiday than ever before. United's forecast calls for 5.9 million passengers flying on its planes and it predicts the travel period to be longer than ever this year too, spread over 11 days. United expects the Sunday after Thanksgiving to be the busiest. From Swifties to Marvel fanatics to loyal Grey's Anatomy fans, our very own Francisco Molina has the hottest on what's going on in the world of entertainment. That's right, Isaiah. So I know what a lot of you are thinking back home, holiday, a Halloween just passed by and you're a little sad. We can't see the scary movies. And those cheesy Hallmark movies are too far to see with your girlfriend or to all my single fellas with your mom or one of your best friends that's just as single as you. But don't you worry because we have enough to talk about in the world of entertainment for today. So let's check it out. We start off with the artists that the media just can't get enough of. That's right, Taylor Swift. The pop star has been talked about nonstop this year, whether it's about her record-breaking tour or highly publicized relationship. Well, now Swifties have another thing to brag about after the artist was named Apple Music's Artist of the Year. In the first 10 months of 2023, the artist saw 65 songs reach Apple Music's global daily 100. Moving on to the big screen, Marvel makes its return with The Marvels. The all-star-studded female cast includes Brie Larson, Iman Vellani, 
Tiana Paris, and Za Ashton. Paul Giamatti takes on the big screen with a new role in the film The Holdovers. Giamatti plays an unlikable boarding school teacher who makes an unlikely bond with a brainy but damaged troublemaker. The film reunites Giamatti and director Alexander Payne in what many film critics are calling a great performance. Well, I don't know about you guys back home, but I can't get enough of McDreamy or Patrick Dempsey, as he probably prefers to go by. Well, that's it for me on the latest in the world of entertainment. I'm sending it back to you, Sarah. Thank you, Francisco. National parks are the perfect place to spend this Veterans Day. Here's why. Head on over to your closest national park this Saturday. The National Park Service is waiving all entrance fees for Veterans Day, but you will still have to pay for services like camping, boat launches, and special tours. There are more than 400 national park sites across the country. This is the last chance for free admission this year. I don't know about you, Isaiah, but I sure love the national parks. Have you ever been yourself? I actually have it. It's a dream of mine to go. One of my bucket lists is to go to Yosemite and Zion National Park. So hopefully I can get some time to do it uh, within the next year with my family. What about you? Well, I've actually traveled to Yosemite National Park, Joshua Tree, and Sequoia as well. And they're all equally beautiful. So if you have the chance, I definitely recommend going. Well, TFTI, but... <laughs> Thank you for joining us tonight on OC News. Our next telecast comes to you next Wednesday starting at 4.30. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel at Titan TV CSUF. From all of us here at OC News, have a great night.